What is going on, Cars Chat community? My name is Matt Vaughn, and I am a recently appointed, anointed Cards Chat ambassador. So I'm here to basically answer your questions, uh, help you out with strategy, entertain you, and just talk about everything poker. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel, that's Matt Vaughn as well. It's a poker vlog. Uh, I do a lot of strategy stuff over there, but uh, also a lot of live poker recapping my sessions. A little bit of online content too. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with me at all, I have been in and around poker for the last 10 plus years, but I've been basically treating it as a professional for about the last five. I am, like I said, a poker vlogger, but I'm also a poker coach and first and foremost, always a poker player. Uh, so I'm really excited to be joining Cards Chat and joining all of you. I'm actually a longtime Cards Chat member, something like 13 years. First came around when I was trying to figure out sort of uh, how to hit the ground running and start getting better at this game. And I think I have like over 7,000 posts or something at the time of this recording. So you know that I really believe in uh, this community and I'm just absolutely so stoked to be here with you guys once again. Uh, for this video, I'm actually going to be hopping into one of um, the questions that has been asked in my Ask Me Anything thread. Uh, I think all the ambassadors have one. So uh, if you haven't um, checked that out yet, you really should. This is mine, uh, again, Matt Vaughn, King of Moody Rants. And basically you can ask me anything. I will focus on hand analysis because I think that's where I sort of shine the most. Um, through doing the poker vlog, it's where I have spent the vast majority of my content sort of life. And so it's where I feel the most comfortable, but it isn't ask me anything, anything about poker, um, managing finances in poker, you know, online versus live, you know, what sites do I like for US players? Uh, really anything. It could even be YouTube, actually, because I'm now, uh, I guess, sort of like a pseudo expert in, in YouTube as well. So um, yeah, I just wanted to hop into this. As you can see, I'm pretty new, so we haven't had too many questions yet. But there was a uh, an interesting one here from, let's see, who was it? It wasn't David, I don't think. Here we go. Um, so this is a question from Dalem. It's pretty long, so I'm gonna actually focus on uh, just one part of it, but you can kind of skim it. You can pause the video and read it if you're interested or just head to uh, cardchat.com to check it out if you haven't yet. And uh, definitely subscribe to my thread so that you can kind of like keep posted on, you know, just when updates are happening and uh, when good questions get asked. But um, the question he kind of drives at here is near the bottom. Uh, he says, one last question, which is poker star specific. So many times I set up to see players from other countries. I recognize when most of the players from your country uh, standing are great or amazing. At certain stages, you can and will lose flips um, or parties. I think that means hands. Uh, if they are standing poor, so if, if they have like a low equity hand um, or, or out, you can hit it more easier. Can it be a thing that somehow the software tries to balance the number of players uh, from a specific country, as well as when it comes to being in the money or big results, etc. Now, one quick thing to note here is that obviously, you know, English is not this person's first language. Most likely they are filtering through some sort of Google Translate or other translator service. I, I actually think that this is like a really cool thing about Cards Chat is it's one of the most diverse poker communities on the planet. I, I, it's probably the most diverse. There's so many people here who interact from different countries who may not even speak the same language natively. Um, so it, it can be a little bit hard sometimes to um, make sure you're communicating effectively. But um, I think what he's basically driving at here is, is the poker site maybe doing something untoward? Are they trying to, you know, change their software in a way that favors certain people, whether that be to give the appearance of certain countries doing better or certain countries uh, at least being represented where maybe they otherwise wouldn't be. Um, are they, are they sort of like, you know, he's not really asking about like a, a super nefarious sort of rigging, like, Oh, we want to increase the rake or anything like that. But he's effectively asking like, does the software or does the poker site have strong feelings about who wins? And do they try to, you know, change their software so that it does this now, 
I could I could make such such a long video talking about online poker not being rigged, but that would probably uh, break the internet. So I'm I'm gonna focus more on the fact that he not only asks like is it rigged, but he actually asks is it favoring certain countries? Is it favoring weak players from certain countries? Because in my experience, and he doesn't say this explicitly, but you can tell from his language that this is where it's coming from. In my experience, I have seen times when players who were weak or got it in bad from countries that were maybe less represented or you know were, were rep, like allowed to have a more diverse spread of countries, um, I've seen them win in spots where I, they shouldn't, right? Because of their equity was low or, you know, whatever. Most of the times people are talking about tournaments, um, all in sort of all in equity and having like low equity and winning. Now, just right off the bat, like from an outside perspective looking in, there's really nothing that benefits the poker site here. If they were to, you know, try to make the software work in such a way that a broader swath of the overall world population was represented. So like, you know, countries that might not traditionally be considered, you know, big poker countries and giving them a shot at kind of, you know, getting getting into the limelight, there's not a lot of benefit to them. Now, maybe you could argue there's some sort of kind of like uh, promotional thing where, you know, if they get more people from other countries, it brings people from those countries in. But, you know, I think that's like very, very minimal. And when you look at the risk factor for them, if they were to start doing stuff like this deliberately and anybody found out, which I, let's be real, they would eventually find out, uh, it looks really bad on poker stars, right? And when you look at risk analysis like this, they have so much to lose, right? Poker stars, uh, if not still the biggest site in the world, you know, one of the top few biggest sites in the world, um, certainly been the leader in tournaments for a very long time, if not currently. And they have a lot to lose because they have that standing. They already have built this. Um, most times you won't see companies take massive risks, especially uh, when they already have kind of a good thing going. So right off the bat, I'm kind of like, yeah, it doesn't really feel like it is, you know, going to be something that's relevant. Now, the second piece of this is that this, this player did not really offer any evidence other than the anecdotal, right? The anecdotal being, uh, I have seen this before, or it feels like this is happening, right? What he's sort of like seen and the perception and the lens through which he views that has sort of confirmed over time what he believes to be true. Now, this is something that kind of harkens to this idea of confirmation bias, right? Where this player has seen something that he's like, hmm, I wonder if this is going on. And now the next time he sees something, he's kind of like, well, you know, I don't know, this player from, uh, I don't know, South Africa uh, just, you know, got super lucky on me. And, you know, I had in the back of my head, like, maybe PokerStars is trying to help, you know, sort of smaller countries or countries where poker is less big, you know, win these, these spots or whatever. And, you know, oh, and it just happened again, right? And so there becomes this feedback loop, right? He's like, kind of got this thought of like, maybe this is happening. And then he sees something and he's got it contextualized with that framework. And so he's like, oh yeah, that uh, sort of feeds into that narrative, right? That confirms what I was maybe thinking, right? And so now that thought becomes a little bigger, a little stronger, right? And when he sees things that are, you know, that person maybe not winning that hand, it's just, oh, that's what's supposed to happen because I was ahead equity wise. Or when he wins when he was behind, he's like, oh, well, at least, you know, I finally got lucky, right? There's all these kinds of existing thoughts or existing perspectives that this player has where uh, it, it starts to feed into this broader picture and this bigger view of, oh, Poker Stars is probably doing this. Now, Confirmation bias is really dangerous in a lot of areas of poker and a lot of areas of life because a lot of times it starts so small. And when it's such a small thing, it's really not wrong per se because it's more of an inkling. It's more of a, a, a thought. It's not a, you know, big theory. It's not a, it's not a conspiracy theory, right? It's not this big thing that defines everything, but it's small. And so therefore, you don't really try to get rid of it. You're not like, oh, that's, you know, I need to dispel this because if it's wrong, it's terrible, right? But these things grow slowly over time and can really be detrimental. 
Um, there's tons of things where, like, if, if you were to think this way about some other area of poker, like, oh, just that it's rigged in general, right? If you think this way about online poker, then you might not even care to try to get better. You might just think, uh, okay, well, this just sucks and it's not even worth playing. And you don't end up even get trying to get better at poker. And in a lot of ways, you might be missing out from that because poker is such an amazing game, right? I mean, there's so many examples. Uh, I could give many of them. But I hope that this kind of shows how uh, confirmation bias is pretty rampant. And a lot of times you don't see it. That's what we call a blind spot, when there, there's a sort of a problem in your thought process, but you yourself can't see it. Oftentimes, you need somebody from the outside looking in to actually be able to identify it and kind of notice it for you. I hope that this has been helpful. Uh, this is just kind of the first question that really jumped out at me as being sort of an interesting topic, but I need more questions from you guys. I sort of envision myself doing much more hand history of you uh, sort of videos. So if you guys throw me hand histories, uh, throw me just anything that you kind of uh, want me to talk about. I will do my best. I think video is a lot more fun for me and I think more interactive for you guys. And then I'll just post the videos uh, kind of here in the thread and we can have back and forths in the thread as well. Um, but that's going to be it for me for now. This is Matt Vaughn with Cards Chat signing off and I'll see you in another video soon.